This is Dateline Wyoming, produced in the studios of Wyo Radio. Dateline Wyoming is a weekly news feature highlighting community issues and events that shape our lives here in southwest Wyoming. In-depth analysis and interviews with the people behind the headlines. Presented Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of Wyo Radio ownership, management, or those of our sponsors. Time will be made available for responsible dissenting opinion. And now, Dateline Wyoming. This is your host for Dateline Wyoming, Tom Ellis. Today we are pleased to welcome U.S. Senator John Barrasso to our program. There is legislation coming to the floor of the Senate for consideration that will affect Wyoming residents, and we'll talk with the Senator concerning critical issues. Also, since this is an election year, we'll ask the Senator about his assignment as Chair of the Republican Platform Committee during the recent convention. Those and other issues ahead as we visit with Senator John Barrasso, this morning on Dateline Wyoming, recognized by the Wyoming Association of Broadcasters as the best news talk program for the year 2016. Our guest today on Dateline Wyoming is Senator John Barrasso, U.S. Senator from Wyoming. Senator, welcome to Dateline Wyoming. Well, it's always great to be with you, and it's always better when I'm in the studio right with you, Tom. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you here today. Let's just jump right in. Uh, are there some any issues pending in the Senate that uh, you are concerned about uh, affecting Wyoming? Well, absolutely, and so much of it, you know, deals with energy. A lot of the regulations that are coming out of the Obama administration have hurt our economy. And this week, we had a chance to have a, you know, you travel around the state, and that's why uh, I'm here, because I just love the Shrimp Festival, which is, uh, you know, on the island in Green River. So I get to Sweetwater County with great regularity, have an office here. But as I travel around the state and talk with people, that what the impact of these regulations coming out of the Obama administration on our economy and on the energy uh, nationally are, are big, but certainly on our economy and energy in Wyoming. You know, energy is called the master resource for a reason. It helps power our economy, power our country, power our military. And energy is an instrument of power. And what we have here in energy is a force multiplier and we ought to be using it as the force that it is you can get a lot more done internationally often with a barrel of oil and with a barrel of a gun and it's time for us to start acting like the energy superpower that we are this president with his regulations is making it harder worse we have a a uh, energy bill that we're uh, having in conference i'm on the conference committee from the senate cynthia lummis is on it for the house and we want to get this uh, done before the election other legislation that's that's pending, perhaps. Well, the the whole focus is the regulations that are coming out of Washington that are impacting our waters of the United States, that impact uh, our coal. The and then there's certainly health care issues. The health care law has hurt many people in Wyoming. People I talked to have insurance who had insurance that they liked and worked for them and they could afford. And as a result of the president's health care law, that has been, uh, they found that their premiums have gone up, their deductibles have gone up, their co-pays have gone up, and they're buying insurance for things they don't think is ever going to apply to them. So they don't really even like this. So I have a bill called the State Health Care Choice Act to let states make the decisions rather than have Washington's one size fits all impact Wyoming with regard to health care. And you know, Tom, when Washington has a one size fits all, usually the people that are making those regulations are bureaucrats, unelected, unaccountable, and they just don't work for Wyoming. Is there a path to uh, changing the law or replacing the law? Well, it's interesting because we have the presidential election coming up, and I don't expect to see much change until after we know the outcome of the election. Hillary Clinton has said that she is going to defend and improve the law. I don't know what exactly that means. I think it's very hard to defend this law that has cost so many people so much uh, in terms of losing their doctor, losing their care. You know, the president always says that he has provided people coverage. Well, if you can't use it because the deductibles and the copays are so high, you really don't have care. And health care is about care. I'm a doctor. You know, I've, for um, 25 years, I've been doing the health reports in Wyoming, helping people care for themselves. It's about care, not coverage. 
So Hillary's position is that I met with Donald Trump twice and specifically talked about the health care law and the ways that we can improve it and have states and individuals and patients have it uh, centered on them rather than on Washington. Uh, he agrees with all of those things that I proposed. So we just have to see how the presidential election turns out. OK. When does the Senate go back in session this fall? The uh, right after I think the day after Labor Day. So I'm going to continue to travel around the the state the we did the wyoming stock growers association hall of fame induction on wednesday night in douglas uh the state fair uh starts saturday yesterday uh because we're going to air this on sunday morning uh, in douglas the petroleum association of wyoming met in casper had a chance to be with them we had the uh, breast cancer race in Cheyenne. My wife's a breast cancer survivor. So you get around the state, you visit with people. We did the Congressional Award Program in Jackson for all these young students. And then, of course, during this month, um, I went to the Persian Gulf because we have right now the Wyoming Air National Guard deployed to the Persian Gulf. They're at an Air Force base right near the Straits of Hermus. And, you know, that's right across from Iran. It's that choke point where about 20 percent of the world oil goes through every day. It's 10 time zones away. So these young men and women are a long way from home. And they uh, the day I was there, I think the temperature was 108. And they said that was kind of one of the cooler days. So and they're, you know, and they're wearing heavy equipment. They're not like you are, you know, in a, in a golf shirt. They're out there with their uniforms and and, and heavy equipment. So I think it's always important for us to to thank those who are serving and their families because the families make a huge sacrifice too. So, you know, as a senator, you get around, you want to hear what's on people's minds, see people, listen to them, and focus on the issues that are important for the people of Wyoming. You do spend a lot of time coming back to Wyoming from Washington, do you not? Well, Mike Anzi, Cynthia Lummis, and I try to be home, as we say, we, we're home in Wyoming just about every weekend, not necessarily to our own house, but certainly to home in Wyoming because it's a big state. And we, uh, we love to travel around the state, listen to people, hear what's, what they're talking about. And, and you know what they're talking about. They're talking about jobs. They're talking about the economy and then national security. And national security, uh, you know, it's the issues of ISIS, terrorism, border security, but it's also economic security, energy security. That's what people are looking for. You know, folks that, that I talk to are really looking for a fundamental change in the direction of the country. Two thirds of Americans believe the country is heading in the wrong direction. I agree. And I think it's because of the leadership of, if you want to call it leadership, but the direction of Barack Obama. And just this week, and actually this this past week, the, the White House has finally admitted that they did pay to Iran money related to the release of our hostages. So they, you know, they, they don't want to say the word ransom, but that's what it was. That's exactly what it was. It, yeah. And we know that Iran, because, you know, as I was saying, Tom, I was just over in the Persian Gulf visiting with our soldiers to thank them. But at the same time, when you're there, you meet with the defense ministers of those countries. You meet with the foreign ministers. And they will tell you that Iran is using that money for additional terrorism. They don't use it to build hospitals or schools or, you know, fix the roads. They're using it for terrorism in the whole Middle East. So the president's foreign policy has been, uh, I mean, it's certainly been weak, but it's been one that is allowed or if not invited aggression. Our friends no longer trust us. Our enemies no longer fear us. You know, when the president drew that red line in Syria and Assad crossed it and the president did nothing, that sent a signal, not just to Assad, but to Putin. It allowed Putin to be aggressive and move into Ukraine and take Crimea. It allowed for additional nuclear tests in North Korea. You know, the, the president signed this Iranian deal. And I will tell you, I think it's a terrible deal. Gives, as you said, gives them money. And, and they are in complete, they are violating it routinely with their testing in terms of ballistic missiles. And yet, they so they will not comply, but President Obama will not enforce it. And when you make promises and you don't keep them and you're president of the United States in terms of threats to foreign leaders, uh, they'll walk all over you. And that's what's happening right now with this president. Well, looking into your senatorial crystal ball, what do you see as the future of that part of the world? Uh, it's very troublesome because I see things shifting. The news reports this week that Russia 
was taking off was taking off planes for bombing missions from Iran. So we went from that part of the world where the United States and our and our friends and allies there were always together, and now we have Russian uh, involvement in Iran. Iran with much more money because Barack Obama said, "Yeah, give it to him," and additional terrorism. And look, let's face it. Those terrorists want to come to the United States. My concern is the homeland, the safety of the American people. And we know that ISIS, which the president once called a JV team, uh, we know that they are on the rise. John Kerry says they're on the run. They're on the move. They're on the rise. And they continue to cause and train people to cause disorder uh, and acts of terror, random acts of terror around the world. And they want to come to the United States and do that. One of the issues that has come up as being an important part of this coming election is is appointments to the Supreme Court. How does that stand? You know, I was uh, here not too long in Rock Springs, not too long after Justice Scalia died. And, you know, Justice Scalia, great man, loved Wyoming came here came here hunting of all of all things and he loved coming to wyoming and actually died in texas on a hunting trip the thing that was interesting is he's been such an instrumental participant in rulings that really care the people of wyoming cared a great deal about number one is the second amendment there is a decision called the heller decision it has to do with the second amendment and our right to own guns and Justice Scalia was on the deciding tie side of that vote, which said the Second Amendment relates specifically to our individual rights as citizens to own and bear arms. Now, the person that President Obama has nominated, the name that he put forth to take Justice Scalia's job on the Supreme Court, is a guy named Merrick Garland, and he rules on the other side of that. He says, oh, no, the Second Amendment applies to a well-regulated militia. So the nominee made by President Obama is someone who has been opposed by the NRA, by fans of the Second Amendment. Uh, and this is a guy who on his years and years, like 19 years on a district court in, in, in the District of Columbia, basically tends to rule with the trial lawyers and the regulators against normal people who are who are taking cases to his court. So we have not had hearings. We have not had a vote. And the president is a lame duck president. We believe that it's the next president who ought to make that appointment. And, uh, and that's why I think this election is so consequential, Tom, because it's not just that one position that's going to be filled by the next president, which is the, the Scalia uh, vacancy. But when you take a look at the Supreme Court, Justice Scalia wasn't one of the oldest members of the Supreme Court at the time that he died. You have Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you have Stephen Breyer, Anthony Kennedy. So it's hard to tell you, to, to know exactly how many people uh, the next president will be appointing. But that's why it's critical that we have elected to the presidency someone who's going to make, because these are lifetime appointments, and those impacts can be there for 30, 40 years. Dateline Wyoming continues after this message. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Getting support from friends online kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. Instead of smoking after I ate, I'd get up and take a walk. I missed having a cigarette in my hand, so I'd hold a pen or a straw, anything. Until I knew I wouldn't give in to temptation, I spent more time with my friends who didn't smoke. I went to places that were smoke-free. I didn't stay quit the very first time I tried. I kept on trying, and I learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. I quit. I quit. I quit. We did it. So can you. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. We now continue with Dateline Wyoming. Are there other issues coming up in this fall that, that we should be aware of? Well, I think, you know, the big one is going to be the election. And there's going to be a lot of jockeying back and forth with the candidates. You see it in the presidential election. You see it in the Senate. You see it in the House. And then certainly here uh, in Wyoming. Cynthia Lummis, who has been just terrific to work 
with uh, for so many years that I've been in the Senate is uh, is retiring. So we've had a primary, the Republican primary, and the Democrat primary. So that November election uh, is is on the ballot. And of course, I'll uh, support Liz Cheney. I talked to her the night that she was uh, that she won the nomination. I'm going to do anything I can to help travel the state with her, campaign with her, and I think she'll be focused on the issues that people of Wyoming are folk- focused on. Jobs, the economy, national security, energy security, economic security, and focused on the future. Uh, the uh, the legislative races are important. The county commission races are important. Mayoral races, that are, they're all important. So there's a lot of discussing that we need to do between now and November when people turn out to vote in the general election. It really behooves the, the citizens to be informed and, and know what's going on, doesn't it? Well, I think it's very helpful to uh, – and, you know, the thing about Wyoming – is you really you really have a chance to get to know anybody at any level, uh, whether it's the governor, or the representative, the U.S. senators, your state rep, state senator, county commissioner. We're all available and and try to make ourselves available uh, as well. So you know we tra- we travel around the state. We don't have security. We're ju- it's just us. My phone number's in the book. As you mentioned, this is a political year. Uh, At the past convention, you had a rather prominent position in that as chair of the platform committee. Would you like to talk about that just a little bit? Sure. I I agreed to chair the platform committee at the Republican National Convention, which uh, writes the platform for the party. There's 112 members of the platform committee. It's two from every state. And uh, one man and one woman, and then a man and a woman from each of the six territories. That's how you get to 112. And I thought it was important to do the job when Paul Ryan and uh, Reince Priebus and um, you know Senator McConnell asked me to do this on behalf of the party, uh, because I chair the Senate Western Caucus. And I thought it was really important for us to make sure we had a very strong energy policy that uh, would allow us to continue to stimulate our economy. That in- So it includes things like uh, additional exploration for oil, exporting liquefied natural gas, which we have an abundance of here, the uh, the, the issues that affect, you know, Trona, nuclear power, all of the uh, the issues that, that affect us. So the thing when you're on the platform committee, it meets not just during the convention in Cleveland, but you, people that serve on this committee go to Cleveland a week early to hammer out the platform and work on it. It's a very conservative platform consistent with conservative principles of the, of, uh, you know, of the Rocky Mountain West. Uh, one of the papers back east said this might have been the most conservative platform in, in 100 years. The, the bottom line is this is a grassroots platform that has come from the bottom up. People who are focused on, on jobs, the economy, and national security and changing the fundamental direction of this country. Contrary to some of the predictions about the convention, sitting in my armchair watching it on TV, it seems like it came off fairly well and went fairly smoothly. Well, I think it did. The uh, there was there were talks about there'd be riots in the streets and demonstrations, and none of that happened. The it was very peaceful, very orderly. The uh, I think it was a great opportunity for people from Wyoming and the Wyoming delegation to spend time together from all parts of the state and then to spend time with other delegations. So I thought it was we were in the same hotel outside of Cleveland at some suburb, the Wyoming delegation and the Alaska delegation. So we did a number of things together in terms of meal functions and speakers and just the the commonality of the issues in terms of energy, in terms of environment. And, you know, we all think of Energy is energy security, economic growth, and environmental stewardship, and they do it well in Wy- in Wyoming, and they do it well in Alaska. And we just need to make sure that uh, people that think like we do from Alaska and the Rocky Mountain West have a, more of a say in Washington. And I think that has a lot to do with who wins the presidential election, because Hillary Clinton has said no to fracking. She said she's going to put coal miners out of work. The uh, I mean, it's interesting. I, I went through the Democratic platform because I chair the Republican platform, and you look at that, it's, there's basically no focus on economic growth. There's a lot of redistribution of income and wealth, but no economic growth. You know, Bernie Sanders played such a role in, you know, socialism. It's, it's, the, it's the best way to make sure that everybody is equally poor. And I want to grow the pie. I want to make America grow again. And free market economy is a way it's, uh, it's it, it helps Lots of people. Uh, it's unequal, 
uh, and often related to effort, not just existence. So I'm going to continue to focus on those sorts of things. And the differences are dramatic. The, the energy platform of the Democratic National Committee is to, they want to uh, shut down fossil fuel on public lands. And remember, half of Wyoming are public lands. And their solution on energy is one half of a billion. That's you know, so 500 million. Now we're a country of about 300 million. So for every man, woman, child, baby, each one of them gets one and a half solar panels over the next four years. I mean, do these people forget about Solyndra, which was that bad deal that lost hundreds of millions of dollars in California, that solar deal that was part of President Obama's so-called stimulus package? You know, but that's their answer. And that's just wrong. It's wrong headed. And if we make decisions, economic decisions regarding energy, if we do it based on free market principles, Wyoming is going to do very, very well. If we do it based on extreme environmental principles, then we as a nation are going to be left cold, hungry and in the dark. In your years in politics, have you ever seen uh, an election year that is such so unpredictable? We've got an avowed socialist that was running was running a hard race for for the Democratic nomination. We have what you would have to consider a total outsider to politics nominated for the presidential uh, ticket on on the Republican side. It's really been kind of a, a strange year, has it not? Well, I, I agree with you completely, Tom. I was on one of these uh, interview shows on television with Wolf Blitzer on CNN, and he asked me a question, and I said, Wolf, don't ask me. I've been wrong for a year. And, you know, most people that follow this have been surprised by many of the occurrences that we have seen over the course of the last year year in terms of how things have turned out and the twists and turns. Um, earlier this week, I met with our uh, at the emergency medical services trauma conference and about 400 people, you know, the paramedics, the EMTs, all of the folks that do such a wonderful job helping helping us at times when when we need help, uh, either at home or on the highway. And somebody asked me about the presidential race and I wasn't there to be talking about anything political. I was talking about thanking them for the great job they do. And I said, you know, it is one of the it's most unusual year I've ever seen. I said, you know, you have the two people who have been nominated for president uh, be, you know, basically being uh, not trusted or uh, distrusted and their negatives are higher than their positives. We've never had that in, a, in, a po in politics that for both of them. And so, if, you know, if we want to have this country unified, neither of them right now seems to be, have a unifying presence or campaign it's not you know i always saw ronald reagan morning in america I mean, that was a good message to bring us all together the, the we don't see it this year it's uh and we'll see how the debates turn out but it's uh i think there have been a lot of surprises and i, I would bet there are going to be more to come tom i guess if nothing else i think it's making people interested it's getting their attention in terms of the whole process well just the republican primary debates the number of people tuning in have been setting records and I would expect uh, for the at least the first debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I mean, I would expect Super Bowl type numbers in that debate. I mean, that's going to be must see TV. Any other thoughts that you'd like to share with us today? Well, it's always great to be here to visit to, uh, you know, and anything I can do to be helpful. We, you know, we have so many young people. Uh, if you have uh, if people that are listening in have a son or daughter who's interested in a military academy, we want to help them with that. We you know call my office. I have an office right here in Rock Springs. It's right you know in the in the office building, the bank. We want to help make sure that that young person has the best possible application. We we have worked with those folks to make sure they can get into school. Uh, we have great interns. Never had a bad intern, and uh, so we have students that that participate in that program. Of course, actually one of them is here to listen in on this interview to make sure I don't say anything too bad and um, she hadn't hit me in the back yet so I think we're okay the if people are going to be in Washington we want to see them you know that's the, the beauty of Wyoming Mike Enzi Cynthia Lummis and I have always felt that anybody that makes it from Wyoming to Washington we want to see them and um, and we really make it an effort to have but if you call ahead of time if you want tours we can set things up for you uh, of course our preference is always see you here at home in wyoming because 
that's where we prefer to be. And, you know, people continue to say, well, what do you tell them in Washington from Wyoming? And I say, well, it's real simple. I just tell them in Washington, leave us alone. Our land, our water, our air, our guns, leave us alone. For today, Senator, thanks for coming in today. Always great to be with you. Thanks, Tom. Our guest on Dateline Wyoming this morning has been Republican Senator John Barrasso. You have been listening to Dateline Wyoming with your host, Tom Ellis. Dateline Wyoming is a public affairs presentation of Wyo Radio News presented every Sunday at this time, highlighting community issues and events that shape our lives here in Southwest Wyoming. Views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of Wyo Radio ownership, management, or that of our sponsors. Time will be made available for responsible dissenting opinion. Audio copies of this program will be available each Monday following the program's airtime on Sunday at youtube.com slash yo radio.